very much. I think we do. We have a terrific show lined up for you tonight. Naturally, we have Vicki Lawrence and Lyle Wagoner and our wonderful Harvey Corman with us. And our special guests this evening are Nanette Fabre and Nancy Wilson. a little bit first can we turn the lights up if any of you have any questions you might want to ask about the show the people connected with the show anything don't hesitate just raise your hands yes just you do your Tarzan yell please want me to do the Tarzan yell oh all right Burnett, do you remember when you went on the Gary Moore show? I sure do. Skit, <laughs> they did a skit where all the actors went off cue and they didn't let you know about it to play a joke on you? Yes. How did you feel afterwards? Well, uh, the, the young gentleman was talking about the, it was my last show on Gary's show, and uh, they wanted to foul me up, and I didn't know it, but they'd been rehearsing a sketch one way, and I, with me all week, and then Gary and Durward rehearsed it another way so that when we got on air, they were taking, Durward was taking my lines and Gary came in the wrong door and the telephone was off the hook and it was ringing at the wrong time and the doorbell rang and I opened it and nobody was there and all that, you know. I thought Durward was drunk. <laughs> I really did because he, he never would drink before a show or anything and they even went so far as to have him walking around with what looked like a drink before the show because it was the last show and I thought, gee, Durward, he never does that, you know, and it was really kind of frightening. We played a trick on Harvey kind of like that uh, last season when he was supposed to be hit by the kitchen door and he was waiting for it and we didn't do it. <laughs> he was left out there. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. How old were you when you started dating? How old was I when I started dating? Are you interested? <laughs> Have you ever thought in terms of, you're not really? <laughs> Why do you want to know? Are you How old are you? Uh, 13. You're 13. Are you interested in, in a girl? Will you want to date? Is that it? Well, uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> kind of putting you on the spot there, huh? Well, I was about, I guess, uh, really around 16. And uh, then I didn't have any more once I was 17. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I like your outfit, but the Mickey Mouse watch really sets it off great. Oh, you like the Mickey Mouse? Thank you very much. It's a great way to learn to tell time, you know, with the big hand here. It's cute at 6.30. <laughs> <laughs> Do you appear on any shows like uh, Joey Bishop or any of those? Yes, I've been on, on Joey's show and Johnny Carson's and, and Merv Griffin's. Got to give Merv a plug, too. Uh, he's with uh, CBS. Yes, I, I like doing their shows very much. I would love to get on the dating game, though. <laughs> your autograph please could you uh, get it afterwards or you know the best thing to do you the artist's entrance down there where the guard is would you leave me your name and address and I'll be very happy to send you a picture okay of Kim Novak <laughs> hers are much prettier than mine but if you want mine I'll send you mine too yes I was wondering if it'd be all right with you if we took Lyle home my mother's really crazy about him you want to know if it's all right with me if you take Lyle home because your mother's crazy? Ask Lyle's wife, Sharon. That would be the one to check with. Yes, ma'am. Oh, or did you want to be excused? Oh, the light was in your eyes. I see. Oh, okay. Yes? Do I think nudity will ever come to television the way it has in movies? Not on our show. <laughs> but yes. If they made a movie of your life, how would it be rated? If they made a movie of my life, how would it be rated? <laughs> C, for children. <laughs> yes. Can you tell me, please, who makes your beautiful dresses? Who makes the beautiful clothes on our show? Well, they're designed by Bob Mackey, and a lovely lady named Elizabeth Courtney uh, sews them. Actually, I did this one. I just finished the last sequin before the show tonight. I was back there and doing that. You don't believe that. <laughs> Do you think we will have, we will have snow on, your, on that show? Do you think we'll have snow on this show? Well, outside, outside. outside. Not, not in California, but uh, there, where are you from? 
From Berlin? Germany? From Berlin. There may be snow in Berlin in January. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Are you still planning on having an act with Jim Neighbors this summer at Lake Tahoe? Oh, I would love to. Jim and I do work together quite a bit, and we had talked about appearing in Tahoe or, or, and or Las Vegas together because uh, it's easier, you know, when you work together uh, to go into a nightclub like that, and then you don't have to work as hard because you split up the time. We are planning possibly going to Caesar's Palace together for a couple of weeks, something like that. There's a young lady in our audience. I saw her. Uh, in Dames at Sea in New York, and I absolutely fell in love with this talented girl, and I think she's going to be one of the biggest stars in our business, and uh, we're very pleased that she's here tonight. She just flew in from New York, not to see our show. The tickets aren't that hard to get, but she's here, and I'd love to introduce her. Bernadette Peters, ladies and gentlemen. You saw True Grit on the plane? Oh, that's great. What'd you eat? <laughs> well, yeah. True Grit. True Grit. <laughs> True Grit. You see what I mean? Yes, sweetheart. I saw you at a show with Lucille Ball. Do you like working with her? I love working with Lucille Ball. Yes, yeah, she's one of the nicest ladies in our whole business. Thank you for asking. Any other questions? Oh. Yes. Uh, I'd like to know what you got for Christmas. <laughs> you. <laughs> Something about you in a sweater. <laughs> Shut up and sit down, you fool. Give me a little push, will you? Get mine straight. All righty. Zippity doodah. I love the way you do that, Molly. You tonight, you're carrying on like George Jessel. Just feel good, that's all. I want to go anywhere tonight? No. Nope. Oh, I'm tired of just sitting out here all the time. Well, you might as well get used to it, Bert. When you're 90, this is a rock festival. Uh, I sure'd like to hop on a souped up motorcycle and go whizzing down the highway with a surfboard on my back, looking for the gigantic waves and Wake up, swinger. Did you see the doctor today? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yep, what'd yep. he say? He said I got 10 good years left. He said that 10 years ago, and I'm still waiting. <laughs> well, for your information, the, the doctor calls me Stutz Bearcat. Why? He says I'm like a well built old racing car. Does he know you ran out of gas? <laughs> Didn't run out of gas, it just got me a flat tire. <laughs> Can I give you a little zets? Feel better, Stutz? I'm sorry, Molly. Forget it. <laughs> uh, 
How does that feel? Compared to what? <laughs> the doctor didn't say I had to slow down. If you slowed down anymore, you'd be a statue. You can see how I'm sleeping in the living room tonight. It's up to you. If it's up to me, I'll sleep in the kitchen. Why? Because I'm used to refrigerators. <laughs> Thought you had me on the ropes, didn't you? <laughs> it's too nice an evening to sit out here and argue. Yeah. You know, last night I thought I heard a burglar out here. Well, there's nothing valuable in our house. He'd have been wasting his time. Yeah, that's true. Well, on the other hand, it might have been a peeping Tom. Talk about wasting your time. <laughs> Feel better, Stutz? <laughs> You had a nightmare last night, didn't you? Oh, that was no nightmare. I dreamt I had Raquel Welch cornered. Oh, yeah, that explains it then. Explains what? Why you kept yelling, help, help, help! <laughs> Feel better, klutz? <laughs> well, no. I almost forgot. Hmm. I have to look at my watch. Uh, it's 8 o'clock. Time for our midnight snack. Well, you read the paper. Is there anything on TV tonight? Yeah, they got a show on about Sun City. What's it called? The Survivors. <laughs> Tell you who I like, though, Molly. Dean Martin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a drinking man like I am. There's a big difference between scotch and prune juice. <laughs> Come on, help me up. All righty. One. One. Two, Two, three, three here you go. Blast off. Yeah. Hey, uh, what are you wearing tonight, Molly? Your pajamas or a nightgown? What's it to you? Oh, don't be like that, Molly. I can still turn on, you know. Turn on? You're lucky you can find the switch. <laughs> Department, uh, Miss Popowski, please. Uh, yes, thank you. I'll wait. Hi, Muriel. How's my baby? This is Cuddles. <laughs> hey, honey, uh, how about grabbing a few minutes together in the teacher's lounge before your next class, huh? We'll find a nice, quiet corner and play kissy face. <laughs> Listen, I gotta finish correcting some papers and I'll see you there in three minutes. Okay. Hey, make it two, okay? Bye, hot lips. <laughs> Come in. How do you do, sir? My name is Alex Portnoy. And I was a student in your geography class this term. Do you remember me? How could I forget? What do you want? Well, sir, I would like to talk to you about the grade that you gave me. That's an F, sir, an F in geography, and that stands for unfair. It is not unfair. You were absent or tardy 12 days this month. Well, yes, Now, sir, if you was... don't mind, I'm busy. Oh, well, aren't you going to have, uh, have lunch today, sir? I already had my lunch at my desk. Now, if you oh, don't... Oh, I think that's very commendable that you would have your lunch at your desk. That's wonderful. Instead of the way you do every single day, you know, at that topless restaurant. Yes. <laughs> Care to take another look at this swinger? <laughs> Oh, uh, what makes you think I eat lunch at a topless restaurant? I got this merit badge for tracking. <laughs> well, it happens to be a very good restaurant, you know. The food is excellent. Is that why you kept yelling, whoa, we whoa, whoa, whoa? Uh, maybe I was a little hasty. Uh, I think I could see my way clear to changing this F to a D. Oh, that's very nice. And by the way, sir, I would like to congratulate you on your forthcoming appointment as assistant principal of our illustrious school. Oh, well, it's not definite yet. Oh, it's not? Well, I certainly do hope nothing happens to deter your chances. All right, there you are. Now, goodbye. Oh, I'm afraid you did it, sir. Did, did what? Manhandled a student. <laughs> I'm certain they would think twice about giving the assistant principalship to a creature like you who is a savage who would cripple an innocent 12-year-old child. 
Give me Cookie. You aren't a manhandle. You all I did was this. Oh, you did it again, sir. That's a second offense. All right, all right. I get your yeah. point. Next grade is a C. I know what it is. <laughs> a C, and that's final. Oh, now, careful, sir. That's my bad elbow. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe you'd like to change that to a B. No. Oh, now okay, out well. you go. Okay. Well, then maybe you know I'd better call an ambulance and get this thing X-rayed. No, 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 no. Just stay right where you are. I think we can see our way clear to a B. Oh. Now here's your B. That's it. Now would you please go away and forget that you ever saw me? Well, of course, sir. But how could I ever forget you? Never, never. Not as long as I carry this with me. What is that? Oh, it's a. It's a drawing of you by your girlfriend, Miss Popofsky, in the art department. And it has all your muscles showing. Where did you get that? Well, I found it in her wastebasket. It's really quite a remarkable likeness, sir. Of course, I've never seen you without all your clothes on. Let me have that. <laughs> Give me that! Yeah, well, there you'll be a great time loser! Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm sure we can discuss this reasonably. What are you, uh, what are you gonna do with that? Well, I thought this would look very lovely on the first floor bulletin board where all the students could see it. You wouldn't. Right next to Smokey the Bear. <laughs> I, um, I think perhaps I could have an A now, don't you, sir? No A's. I'll give you a B plus. I never gave an A to anyone. Oh, well, thank you. You've been most, most cooperative, sir. And I really am happy that you found it in your heart to give me the grade I so richly deserve. Get out of here! Hello, Art Muriel? Honey, I can't tell you what I've just been through. We've got to be more careful. If that idiot principal ever found out what we've been doing behind his back, he'd can me in a second. I can't, a kid just won't... I can't talk now. I'll tell you all about it at my place tonight. <clears throat> Come in. I'm sorry, sir, but I left my lunchbox here. Could I have it, please? Oh, be careful, sir. I wouldn't want you to break my tuna fish sandwich or my tape recorder. <laughs> tell me, is this the first time you've ever given an A, sir? <laughs> This uh, lady has become kind of a semi-regular on our show, and we all couldn't be happier. Miss Nancy Wilson.
now, Nancy, are you ready for the customary talk leading into our duet? Okay. I think that's enough, don't you? That's <laughs> to think I'm bringing Roger home from another office party. There you go, Charlie. You know, he does kind of remind me of Roger. In what way? He looks almost human. <laughs> well, come on, we've got an hour to practice before Roger gets home. Oh, well, Carol, couldn't we do it later? I'm awful tired. No, we can't do it later because I don't ro want Roger to know that we're taking this course in Red Cross until we get our certificates. Why not? Well, because he always laughs at me and he says, I never finish any project I start, and this time I'm going to do it. I'm going to surprise him. Okay, now then, most accidents occur in the home. So, ooh. <laughs> what could we have happen to Charlie here? Well, uh, he could eat some of your cooking. <laughs> How about if he's reading the newspaper, yeah. right? And suddenly the house is struck by lightning, which causes the water main to burst, the gas lines to rupture, and the roof to cave in. So Charlie's got a concussion, a broken arm, he's overcome by gas, and about to drown. We had that in class last Tuesday. Besides, I don't want 
want it to be a major catastrophe. I want just a nice, normal little accident that could happen in the home. How about the television? What? He's watching television. He reaches over to switch to another show, and suddenly he gets a tremendous shock. The Smothers Brothers. <laughs> no, Carol, a short circuit. A short circuit. Okay, I'll buy that. All right, and then while, uh, while you're there, let's make this like a real-life situation. Okay. You be there watching television, okay. and I'll be in the kitchen whipping up a fantastic meal. Shut up. Okay. And uh, you, you yell to me, and, and I'll come out, and we'll go into okay. emergency action. Okay, okay. All right, Charlie, you just got home from a tough day at the office. When you reach over to turn on the TV, bzzzt. Administer artificial respiration to the victim. Okay. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, Charlie, you're gonna be okay. You're smearing your lipstick. I can't help it. Is he responding? About as much as Roger does. Actually, he's a little better than Roger. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He's responding. He's doing yes, sir, Charlie. Okay. Oh. Good. Now what? Uh, two glasses of brandy. Why two? I need one as much as he does. <laughs> it's just fabulous. Charlie, you're gonna be okay, baby. Oh. oh, Chrissy. How do you feel? We just saved a man's life. To first aid. To us. Oh, oh. 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 right over my All right. No. Give it to me. I'll well. get the spots out before they dry. Oh, here. Oh, wouldn't you know it's clumsy. There you go. Can't Thank you. Now, remember, not a word about this to Roger. Well, he'd be proud of us learning first aid, no, Carol. Now, please, I want him to be surprised. And for 15 bucks a piece, he'd expect us to be brain surgeons. <laughs> oh! oh he's home early. Oh, in the closet. I'll do your blouse. Okay. Clean up. Get in there, Charlie. <sighs> <sighs> Hi, honey. Hi. <laughs> Hi, dear. Hi. Hi. You're home early. Oh, I brought some work with me. Oh, how about that? <laughs> Why are you so out of breath? What have you been doing? Running. Oh. <laughs> what are you putting in the closet? <laughs> My jacket! <laughs> What's the matter with you, honey? Oh, nothing. It's just that uh, I'll put it, hang it up for you. It's been a long day. No, it's been a short day. I came home early, remember? Oh, yeah, well, you know, you know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean, honey. Why are you so jittery? What's going on around here? Oh, it's nothing, honey. It's just, well, you threw off my whole schedule, came home early, and I was running around trying to you know, oh. straighten things up. I'm terribly sorry. Would you like me to go out and drive around the block for another hour? <laughs> What's with these uh, brandy glasses? Oh, uh, well, Chris and I... We... Chris doesn't drink, and you know it. What's going on around here, Carol? Oh, there's a very simple explanation. Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> it's, it's not that simple. Simple or complicated, I want some answers. Now, this whole thing doesn't add up. Why what? are you so rattled? What, what's with these brandy glasses? Why is your lipstick smeared? Why are you running around in your under... Whose tie is this? What? It's not my tie. I never would have believed this. <laughs> You've got another man here. A man? Where is he? You, you mean you think I'm, I'm fooling around? Where is he? Well, you have a dirty mind. Never mind that fool yet. Now, where is he? Well, just you go find him. It won't be hard. I'll just look for a guy with terrible taste in ties and women. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm wise to that old trick. No, no, Roger, no, please, not the closet. Get away from there. Oh, Roger, now, really, this is silly. It's gone far enough. It, Roger, oh, has it gone far enough? Now, get away from there. I'm going to kill him. Stop it. He's a dummy. <laughs> Some dummy. 
I'm slaving at the office and he's here drinking with my wife. Get away. I'm going to turn a limb from limb. All right, you get out of there. Never mind, I'm coming in after you. See, that, that's what I was trying to tell you. Uh, Chris and I took this course in, in uh, you know, Red Cross and life-saving and all that, and uh, I didn't want you to know. I wanted it to be a surprise, but we brought the hummy dome, the hummy dome, the dummy home. <laughs> you know what bothers me? What? The hummy almost beat me. <laughs> Oh, oh sweetheart. It's all right. <laughs> oh, I'm, I was just jealous. I just went crazy. I'm That's sorry, lovely. baby. That's lovely. Would you like a drink? I'd love one, baby. Hey, Chrissy, bring out some uh, some ice cubes, would you? I love you. I love you. What? Oh! <laughs> Never mind. Get the first aid kit. We got a real dummy. Stay tuned now for the second half of the Carol Burnett Show, following station identification. As the stomach turns, welcome once again to pleasant little Canoga Falls, population 7,000, all sickies. Joyce. <laughs> oh, Marion, I, I can't hold it any longer. I've got to tell someone. What is it, Joyce? Well, I was on the train to tell you what it is. And you were there on the time. You saw it. You know it. Well, I was there all my life. I never had a time. It was hitting me. I just went and it went right through all the way down. And it went, you left oh, <laughs> And then what? <laughs> My poor family. Oh, Joyce, what's disturbing you? Is it because your brother is going to prison again? No. Is it because your sister's sadistic husband has moved back into the house? No. Is it because of your father's brain surgery? No, this is serious. <laughs> oh, Marion, Marion, Marion. Oh, Joyce, Joyce, Joyce. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't hide it anymore. Marion, I've got to confide in someone. You see? I, I keep getting this, this urge to steal. Marion, I'm, I'm a compulsive thief. I'm, I'm a kleptomaniac. Really? I just can't believe it, Joyce. Why, I've known you ever since we were children. Yes. <laughs> Marion, I just can't seem to control myself. Oh, I'm sick. I'm sick, despicable, and disgusting. Of course you are. <laughs> Joyce, would you like a psychiatrist? No, thank you, dear. The coffee was plenty. <laughs> Why, it's Rhoda, the worst gossip in Canoga Falls. 
Don't tell her about my stealing. Joyce, you're my friend. I don't have time to chat today, Rhoda. I have company. Joyce, the kleptomaniac. <laughs> See that? Yeah. It's getting worse. Joyce, Joyce, why did you wait so long to tell me about your stealing? What would you have done? Used my old china. <laughs> why, why, that sounds like the doorbell. It is. No wonder. <laughs> I'll get it. Help yourself to the coffee. Okay. <laughs> Oh, well, for goodness sakes, if it isn't Gaylord Fontaine, the Civic Theater Group sissy director. Mary and I have a problem. I know. This seems to be a day for problems in Canoga Falls. Now, you know Joyce, don't you? Oh, yes. Hello, Joyce, darling. Oh, hello, Gaylord. <laughs> oh, Gaylord, I wouldn't what? if... Hmm? Never mind. Mary. Yes? I must speak to you privately. All right. Come here. Walk this way. <laughs> I need a leading lady for my play this year, and I don't want to use Joyce this time because she was simply dreadful last year. And this part calls for a real actress because it's all about a neurotic, disturbed person. I think you're missing a good bet. <laughs> I want you to do it, Marion. Oh, that's very flattering, Gaylord, but I'm awfully busy. I'd have to give that a lot of thought. All right. <laughs> oh, joy. Well, I must fly. Where's my hat? Oh, it's, it's in the shopping bag. <laughs> Some friend. Thank you. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Ta-ta. <laughs> Where were we, Joyce? I would... Oh, I hope you don't mind. I hate to break up a set. Naturally. <laughs> Marion, this is just getting to be terrible. I keep getting this impulse to steal. What'll I do? Oh, I figure about one to ten years. <laughs> well, I'll get it. <laughs> Why, it's a handsome door-to-door -door salesman selling something. I'll take a dozen. Oh, I'm not a door-to-door -door salesman. I'm running for Congress. Oh. Marion. <laughs> I'm sorry. I need a thousand signatures so that I can get my name on the ballot in November. Oh, I'll sign. Oh, I appreciate this very much, lovely lady. Oh. <laughs> Are you sure you're old enough to vote? <laughs> <laughs> Just your signature. I won't need your phone number. Oh, pity. Thank you very much, madam. <laughs> and you too, sir. <laughs> well, he won't get any more signatures on this block. Why not? I stole his pen. <laughs> and he wants it back. Why, it's a young girl with a problem. <laughs> Can I help you? Mother, don't you recognize me? I'm your daughter. Daughter? Mother, grandchild. Oh, well, where have you been and what have you been doing? <laughs> I've been to a rock music festival doing my thing. Oh, I see, yes, up. Uh, Darling, I, I hate to widen the generation gap, but uh, are you married? Oh, yeah, I married a drummer in one of the rock bands. Uh, what's his name? I don't know. The music was too loud for me to hear it. <laughs> well, I certainly hope it lasts. I don't think it will. We were married by the guitar player. <laughs> That's so today. I'll see you next time. I certainly do. You know, Joyce, sometimes I worry about her. Yes. 
Oh, isn't she adorable? <laughs> May I hold her? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Joyce, sometimes I worry about you, too. Marion? Yes. Marion. Yeah. I've come to a decision. Good girl. Yes. <laughs> What are you going to do? I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> I'm going to end it all. Oh, Marion, I can't go through life hating myself for what I am. Oh, Joyce, Joyce, Joyce. <laughs> You're going about this all wrong. First of all, you have the gun pointed in the wrong direction. See? <laughs> and second of all, you can be cured. How? Have you talked with Mrs. Carroll, the only registered nurse in Canoga Falls? No, I haven't. Where is she? Be patient. See? <laughs> Hello, Julia. <laughs> it is so nice to see you. Oh, I'm so sorry I'm late, but I had to stop at racially biased Canoga Falls College. You know, they, they turned down my oldest son. The college turned down your son. Yes, they did. How old is he? Six. <laughs> well, dear, don't worry. Integration doesn't come easily. Well, we're only number two. We, we must try harder. That's right. <laughs> yes, uh, Julia, this is Joyce. Joyce, this is Julia. Julia, Joyce, Joyce, Julia. Hello. How do you do? Now, which one of you has the problem? <laughs> It's Joyce. Uh, you see, I'm afraid she has a serious case of kleptomania. <gasps> What's that? I don't know what to do anymore. Oh, help me. Help me. Somebody help me. I, I can't go on this way. Oh, please, please. I beg of you. Tell me what to do. Take two aspirin and get plenty of acting lessons. <laughs> It's too late for that. <laughs> I'm going to end it all. It's the only way out. Oh, wouldn't you know, I forgot to steal any bullets. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to throw myself into the Canoga Falls Falls. <laughs> Joyce, wait! There's something I have to tell you. What is it that Marion has to say? Will Joyce throw herself into the Canoga Falls River and die of pollution? <laughs> and what about Marion? Does she know that her long widowhood is finally coming to an end due to a tragic accident? <laughs> and what of Marion's daughter? Will her hippie marriage last or has it already gone to pot? <laughs> And what about Gaylord Fontaine? Will the Civic Theater Group's sissy director support the young congressman's proposition? <laughs> and finally, what about Julia? What will happen when she gets amnesia and forgets she's a Negro? <laughs> For the answer to these and other dumb questions, tune in tomorrow as this one... Yes, this generation gap can be a drag. What gap? The kids are wearing our old clothes, our bangles, and our beads. So what's so new about their brand new bag? You're right, Nan. Where we said in the groove, they've merely substituted groove. They've rushed to each revival of a Humphrey Bogart movie. Play it again, Sam. <laughs> That's Richard Widmar. They all want love. Remember, we do too. Down deep, there's not so much that's really new. To face the future they will have to face. We'll put ourselves in every young girl's place.
people. There's a guy with a tie and a suit. What a mess. And a chick wearing stock. Look, that's a dress. Hey, look at the people. What weird acting people. I can't understand one word I hear. They don't even mumble. They talk too clear. And we bet those jokers look at Sure and tune in next week when our guests will be Flip Wilson and Vicki Carr. I'm so glad we had this time together just to have a laugh or sing a song. Seems we just get started, and before you know it comes a time.